Brand new Bible. We're still that. Still you got Luke 19. Brand new Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should be going there. I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. Because Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, come down and meet me. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He is going to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look there. Here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I achieve anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, was the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Now, the story about Zacchaeus is familiar. It's, it's familiar enough. You probably remember learning the song when you were in church, when you were a little kid. And it's, and it, 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 but it can teach us a lot about life. A simple story. And Luke tells us that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. So not just any ordinary tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. I'm not sure what the difference was, really, but he had a lot of money. Said he was wealthy. And I don't know what tax collecting looked like then versus now. In those days, tax collectors were notorious for cheating. I don't think they can cheat nowadays. Nowadays, the cheaters tend to tell the tax collectors what to do. And so, <laughs> that's it. it goes a different way. But uh, and one day, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming by, and Zacchaeus knew about it, and he wanted to see him. In the back of my mind, I, I wonder sometimes. If Zacchaeus, and I know this isn't true, but I'm just going to say it because it's going to be funny. Zacchaeus, he's the Bible, he's the Bible version of an IRS agent. When Jesus was late, found his return, Zacchaeus is tracking him down. It could maybe, just maybe, that would make for a funny part of the story if I was going to write the movie. You know, uh, but anyhow, Luke tells us that Zacchaeus was a short guy. Now, I guess mean, by saying short guy, i got to go with these fear because I'm a short guy. You know, um, short, short, short guy. Short guy. And he couldn't see over the crowd, so he climbed a tree to see Jesus. And what Zacchaeus didn't know was that Jesus was also there to be looking for him. Maybe not specifically, but people like him. Someone like him. When Jesus reached the spot, and he looked up in a tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Could you imagine? Put yourself in Jesus' shoes and begin. You're running all of a sudden. There's somebody hanging up in a tree looking at you. Now, I've been to lots of parades where people are, I've never seen anybody climb a tree. You see, so I remember being a little kid, sit on dad's shoulders. That's the coolest place to watch a parade on top of dad's shoulders. And so uh, I'm bigger than dad is now, so I don't get to sit there anymore. But uh, old Zacchaeus, and Jesus says, I'm come down, I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house. And old Zacchaeus jumps down out of the tree and welcomes him. I don't know what Zacchaeus is thinking at this point, but, uh, but I do wonder. If Jesus just invited himself over, is there a Mrs. Zacchaeus? Could you imagine what happens when Zacchaeus goes home and brings a friend? What happens, guys? What happens if you bring a buddy home to dinner without calling ahead? <laughs> you know? Mrs. Zacchaeus goes to a panic because she doesn't have enough food. The house is a wreck. You know, you didn't tell me you were bringing a friend home. Can you give me more of a warning next time? Did you call first? See, that was before cell phones. Zacchaeus could have texted. Say, hey, uh, bringing somebody home for dinner. Get prepared. You know, uh, but Luke tells him he woke him in gladly. But some of the people saw what happened. And you know how people do when they see and they start to mutter. He's going to be the guest of the sinner. He's going to some says, Do you see whose house he's going to? You know what people do. You know when, when, they, when how they talk. Even, even sometimes church people, and sometimes you see something or you hear something, you don't know the whole story, but you jump to conclusions anyhow. And people end up embarrassing themselves. We've all seen it, haven't we? You know, when you jump to conclusions. And when the people jumped to conclusions, Jesus knew what he was doing. And I believe he saw something in Zacchaeus that day. How many people you know to climb a tree to see Jesus? Really, you climb a tree to see Jesus. It's hard to get some folks to come to church to meet Jesus. <laughs> Yet this sinner, they say, yeah, he was a sinner. He was, he was doing some things wrong. Went out of his way to climb a tree to see the Lord. That, that says something. 
And when Jesus saw us like he is the tree, he saw a man who knew something was wrong. Saw an opportunity to make a difference in this guy's life. And upon Jesus coming into his house, and the people were talking about this awful sinner. Zacchaeus stands up and says, hey, look, Lord, right now, right now, I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, he knows he has. He, he knows he's cheated people out of stuff. I'm going to pay back four times the amount. Four dollars. I stole a dollar from somebody. I'm giving them back four dollars. That's going to empty the account I heard. You know, um, but that sounds like repentance to me. That, that, that's repentance. That's not just, oh, hey, sorry, my bad. Can you, can you cut me some slack? That's, this is real repentance. This, is, this guy sounds like a guy who just got his life changed by the power of the gospel. And that's a holy response to the unfathomable grace of Jesus. You see, Zacchaeus wasn't worthy of having Jesus come into his home. But Jesus went anyhow, didn't he? It had an impact on this man's entire life. And then Jesus says something that's impressive here. He says, today salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. You know, this guy may have been a sinner, he may have been a chief, he may have been a tag, he may have been all those things. But nobody is outside of the realm of being worthy of being shared the gospel with and being saved. That was a horribly dramatic, horrible dramatic sense, but I think you got my point. There's nobody out there, no matter how bad they've been, that isn't worthy of hearing the gospel. Now, once you share the gospel, then what they do with it is up to them. Does that mean it's time to be done? <laughs> Everybody else hears that too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Anyway, Zacchaeus gets saved. Zacchaeus gets saved because Jesus was willing to go out of his way to share the gospel with a sinner. And Jesus didn't care what other people thought about him for going to his house. You know, now uh, keep in mind if, if Jesus would have gone about the way some people normally go about it, if he had entered into dialogue, with him about how he lived, I'm sure Zacchaeus would have been open to discussing his theology with him. And old Zacchaeus may have kept going around being a sinner, a lying, cheap tax collector. You see, the grace of God is free, is it not? But it isn't cheap. It cost Jesus his life. It cost Zacchaeus four times the amount he ripped people off. That's repentance. That's evidence that salvation has happened. And as Christians living in the world today, we find the places where we're living like Zacchaeus, those areas we still might have. Um, like we're, we're, we, we, got, we got things going for the most part, but there's two parts of our lives that just aren't right. And let Jesus come in. Repent, change the way we live, and then we need to be like Jesus at the same time. It, it, it's twofold here. Being willing to go the extra mile and to find the person out there who might still carry that title of sinner and offer them the gospel. You know, um, <laughs> show them the love of Jesus. But what person out there isn't worthy of being shown the love of Jesus? I'm praying for a Zacchaeus moment when a life is radically changed by the power of the grace of God. You know, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. And you know the nature of something is lost. You have to look for it, don't you? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't just pop up and bite you in the nose, usually. When something's lost, you have to look for it. There are people out there who are lost. There are Zacchaeuses out there who are lost, who are doing everything wrong. And they've got all kinds of excuses for it. They've got all kinds of reasons for it. Don't argue with them. Did you, did you ever argue somebody into the kingdom of God? Did you ever see Jesus argue somebody to, to repentance? Did Jesus argue with Zacchaeus? No, what did he do? He showed up. He showed up and showed him love. I mean, maybe you know a Zacchaeus. Maybe, maybe you feel like Zacchaeus. You're up a tree without a paddle, so to speak, right? Jesus is coming over. Jesus is coming over. Jesus is coming to your house. You know, the pillow's fault and just so, and just so, uh, you know, and he's bringing grace. He's bringing salvation. We can be like Zacchaeus. If you've gotten it wrong, repent. Repent. And let his grace change us so we can bring that grace to others. You know, you, you, you might, you, there might be people out there who say about you, do you see what he's talking to? He's talking to us. Did you, did, did, I, I've had, um, it's funny when people talk to you. Uh, sometimes people will talk to me and they'll use the most follows of language. See, lucky for me, I've heard all that before. I grew up in locker rooms. I've heard any combination of words you want to put together. I've heard them all. 
And then as soon as they find out, oh, you're a pastor, well, they're not saying those things around you. Again, to start. Yeah. But that's not going to keep you from hanging out with that person. I don't like hearing those words. I don't like seeing some things. It's unpleasant. And it, it, it doesn't hurt my ears as much as it used to. But it's like, well, don't say things like that. But it's who they are. And they're Zachary's. They're just being Zachary's. But then every now and then, I end up in a parking lot talking to somebody until almost one or two in the morning. Because the gospel of Jesus is there. And somehow people find a way and they start talking to me. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm doing so really? Yeah, I'm doing the math in my head. If I get to sleep, I can go home in 20 minutes. It takes me, I can be, and I'm counting on my sleep tonight. I'm out of four hours sleep, man. Come on, finish it up. Let's pray so we can home. But, and people are driving by and they see me in a parking lot talking to somebody. And sometimes it's a little bit you know, embarrassing, but it's you know, an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody. Don't miss those opportunities. That's Zacchaeus. And he's up a tree. And as you get that moment, we pray for moments like that, don't we? Give me an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody. Then when the opportunity comes along, we gotta come through. Right? We gotta come through. Let's pray. Father God, we know, we know maybe maybe we're right now thinking of somebody in our head. We think of the Zacchaeus. Lord, give us an opportunity, Lord. If we are Zacchaeus, bring us to repentance. Lord, if we know a Zacchaeus, Lord, who's up a tree. Lord, uh, the world has all kinds of weird ways of uh, of justifying what they do. We pray, Lord, that it would just be about the business of loving them. And Lord, in finding those Zacchaeuses and bringing them to a place where they can hear the gospel. And Lord, open their hearts and they can hear the gospel and believe the good news. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, as we, as we go about our lives in Jesus' name. Amen.